and then I'm going to do a little demo. And especially for those people who don't, who didn't decide to get a long arm, a mid arm, or another arm in the pandemic, and just had a domestic machine, domestic machine is perfectly fine. You don't need anything fancy. Um, okay, so let me talk about what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm doing contour quilting. Okay, so here's my little face. Okay, and you can see it's got a cup and it's got hair, it's got eyelashes, whatever. When I am looking at the back of this, and I'll, you can pass around. When I'm looking at the back of this, let's take an example of the hair. I'm taking his little curls of hair and I'm simply following those curls. When I am looking at the cup, which is over here. Simple, what's a cup? Just follow the end of the cup. Don't think about it, don't get too, oh my God, I gotta do a motif. Follow the contours. If I was following the contours of my forehead, what do they do? They go like this, don't they? If I was following the contours of my cheek, what do they do? You could almost feel it. When I follow the contour of my eye, my eyelid goes over here, it gets up there, and then I have that bone, and then it goes across. So those are all the contours. And when we think about it too much, we tighten up. And when we tighten up, we mess up. Just loose, loose. Okay, now I'll show you that there. Okay. In the same way, the contour of the glasses. What are my glasses? My glasses are flat, right? So when I'm doing the contour on the glasses, I'm not doing the eye under the glasses. I'm doing the glasses straight across because that's what's there. The only thing I do when I have someone that has glasses, so this is my daughter. This one, by the way, is up at the um, Utah Cultural Center up in Salt Lake in uh, West Valley. Um, so when I'm doing this, I'm going across it, but I'm not going to go across her eye because that would bother me as a viewer, okay? But all I'm doing is following the contours. And on this one, um, this is a print of an already quilted quilt, so you can see underneath the patterns of the contours on that one. So let me go, let me go do a little quilting and then we'll talk about that. So when I quilt, I know that free motioners, you free motion people out there in the world, you think feed dogs down, let me get my couching foot, you gotta, you know, and, and then you're sitting there and it's wobbling and you're going, holy moly, can I really do this? I'm gonna tell you something. You don't need to do that. They only told you you needed to do that. You don't actually need to do that. If you've got a decent machine, this machine was 150 bucks. It's a brother. And it's fine. So what I do is obviously you thread your machine. You pull your um, thread up from the back. If you don't know how to do that, I'd be happy to show you after this, but so you're already notice the color thread. You can use any color you want, like for you could use something that's skin tony like this. I tend to go a little bit lighter and brighter, okay. But um, I've done ones where I've used a pink, especially for a child. There's something about just this light pink that is very nice on a facial color. And here's a quilt. This is one of my first ones that people liked. And it was done with uh, variegated colors and purples. And so you can get really expressive. You do not have to do totally skin tone. All right, now, 
once again, I'm uh, doing a small stitch. A stitch on our machine is usually 2.5 or somewhere in that neighborhood. You probably want to go to two. You know, you don't have to go crazy with this. Um, okay, so now my feed dogs are not down. I do not have a darning foot on and I'm going to be fine. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go this way. Now, here's another thing you want to do. Can you hear the speed of my machine? Am I racing? <laughs> no, I am not. This is not a race. And I know that when quilters, I have gone to quilt classes for when I got my long arm. And so I am actually <coughs> messed up there. Oh, I'm gonna go one. Okay, so when you start your next line, maybe one stitch apart, okay? So you, you, you just, you know, count a stitch and go that maybe two if you really get crazy, but usually one is good. Okay, you turn it around, needle down. My shoulders aren't, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing anything crazy. You're not and, lifting your feet then, is that right? Nope, yeah, I'm not lifting the and feet, I'm just leaving down. it needled. You can still move the yeah. fabric. Yes, ma'am. Come on, can I? Come here. And you can, you can actually, so, come on, come on up. So look. I know they talk. The trick is slow down. Slow down. Don't go fast. And also, the other trick to this, to make a face look good, following the contours, small stitch, close to your last stitch. Sometimes when, you know how sometimes you'll see someone who's done a picture quilt or a portrait quilt, and it kind of looks like Skeletor. You know, it's like you see it and you go, ooh. Stitches are too big. They're too far. They're, 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 they're too far apart. Because what you're doing is, remember, when you leave space on a quilt and you have the batting underneath, what does the batting do between the space? It comes forward, right? <coughs> and so when you leave too much space, then your batting comes forward and then it looks like your face looks like mine in the morning where you've got all these deep wrinkles and puffs and things are going awry and you're thinking, oh God. Puckering, right? Yes, that puckering. So what you wanna do is you wanna go slow Go small. Okay, so I'm just. So you're basically using the stitching for both contour lines and for shading highlights, right? Yeah, the stitching is um, you are drawing the contours of the face with your thread. Okay, so I'm putting it down. Another trick that I have, and this is from David Taylor. Does anyone know who David Taylor is? He's really a good pictorial quilter. He's hilarious too. Um, he, now he matches all of his bobbins in his thread. He's a little OCD, OCD guy. But what he does is before he starts quilting, he takes some novelty fabric or some kind of fabric has a little quilt sandwich and he just warms up tracing around the motifs and i think that is is really a good you know that is a good practice for anybody now the other thing too is do you notice that my hands they don't have gloves on them they don't have gloves on them 
My wrists are not holding this thing like it's for dear life. I'm not gonna get carpal tunnel. Okay, all I'm doing is guiding that because I'm going slow. Now, this is the other case where with your, um, now when you get to a tight curve and because I was not paying attention and moving, I have to go this way. Now, the one thing that I will tell you is going to be problematic if you're doing something larger. Although when I started, I started copy paper size quilts. Every quilt that I, art quilt I did was eight by 10, at most 12 by 18. So if you start small, you really, you really learn the, tr the tricks first. So, I'm going very slow in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. And, okay, I didn't bury my threads. I don't bury my threads. I don't do it. I'm sorry. I just, I figure with paint and everything else, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna bury my threads. So, there we go. I'll go to my grave not burying my threads. Okay, because it's just not happening. Okay. Do you use all the same batting, or do you, do you select uh, your batting for different styles of result? I use Pellon Fusible Fleece. The reason I use Pellon Fusible Fleece is because when I want a quilt to snuggle up on the couch with, with the critters that I own, um, and the one I'm married to, I want a soft, cuddly, all cotton, washed to death quilt. This, I want this to hang straight. And so when you are using Pellon fusible fleece, you can fuse your backing to it which is what I usually do. On my domestic 